Hey, hello, hi, my name is Jacob Flotus. This is chapter 5, When in Doubt, it's from Shakespeare. Um, so, basically what the author was going about um, in the whole chapter, uh, he was talking about William Shakespeare and how his writings have influenced millions of artists and creators for centuries, and um, like how that works with the, and how that like contributes to the audience and whatnot. So, um, beginning in the chapter, he initially starts with, like, a question, uh, like, what these two, uh, artists and this actual piece of work all have in common, and that is that they were all involved with one of, uh, Shakespeare's pieces, The Taming of the Shrew, and what, he does that basically to let, let people know that there are already thousands and almost millions of works that are already reference to um, Shakespeare and any of his stuff. <clears throat> uh, and the author uses um, a lot of specific examples in the beginning, just to name like a few of the on-screen examples, like movies and stuff. Uh, he used The Tempest, um, the one called West Side Story, and then for books, he used one called A Thousand Acres. And then uh, his one of the one that he went on about a lot uh, was Wise Children. He said it, it referenced a lot of William Shakespeare's works, like quite a bit. <clears throat> and then after giving a bunch of examples for that, he went on to go about that. It wasn't just, he wasn't just famous for you know, just the the ideas of works, because a lot of people are famous for that, you know, a lot of people get their own books adapted into movies and stuff, but um, Shakespeare is different from everyone else. He, not just his um, place, but his words, uh, you know, meant a lot to a lot of people, and so uh, in an entire paragraph that was almost like eight lines long, he went on and was just listing a bunch of quotes and these are just like five out of the like over 20 he probably wrote in there uh, to be or not to be uh, good night sweet prince like they, they all sound familiar to the reader um, even though you might not even know where it's from that's just how well you know why Shakespeare's voice has reached to certain people to a lot of artists out there um, why is Shakespeare everywhere? <clears throat> the art, uh, author asks, you know, are people smart for referencing Shakespeare? And he didn't necessarily believe so. Um, you know, he, he genuinely believed that people, like, really liked Shakespeare and that they felt a sort of connection, uh, you know, bouncing the ideas off of him and, and coming up with their own original work. He also believes that Shakespeare holds a certain, like, authority over other works that makes it like um you know just just a higher quality the Shakespeare set the bar high for a lot of uh, pieces of work out there and he also believes that you know some of the writings from Shakespeare are basically sacred in a way that unlike any other writing his are taught around the world constantly and always and you can see his writings influencing others from the 18th century all the way to now. And, and that's the sacred part behind it, according to uh, the author. And he also believes that it, uh, when people use Shakespeare, it allows an easier time for the audience and readers to make connections between these different works. And they can... Uh, they can say more with less words because readers can already start making those connections between the, you know, between different works. Uh, some of the examples that I've been able to find of Shakespeare and other works are like The Lion King. Uh, it said that it is, uh, it took inspiration from Hamlet. I never read Hamlet, but... And I can see a lot of like the Lion King's concept in other works, and that's probably just another concept of Hamlet in their work as well. Um, and then Romeo and Juliet—that's an old one, uh, but it, that, that always that came to my head like immediately 
when thinking of that, just these little gnome things that's obviously like representing Romeo and Juliet. <clears throat> and then the last line of the author's chapter, he says, the rest, dear friends, is silence. And that, uh, I looked it up, that is actually a line from Hamlet. And he basically just closed that out, the, he closed out the chapter with that, uh, to go back to his earlier examples of, you know, you feel like you've heard that line before somewhere, and he's trying to leave you with that impression that Shakespeare is always with us and always has been for almost centuries now. And that was, uh, chapter five, when in doubt, it's from Shakespeare. Thank you.